What's good everybody? Justin here again. Welcome back to the YouTube channel as always. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you're doing great. Hallelujah to be alive. Today we're going to be talking about a very popular effect that's been becoming more and more popular over the last couple of years and I like to refer to it as the slow shutter transition or slow shutter time lapse effect. It's also known as step printing in the movie industry. It's not a super popular effect in Hollywood but I've noticed it's become very prevalent in in music videos. You've probably seen it in some of like the Jack Boy music videos, but it's a really great effect and really nice to break up the flow of your edit and just kind of shock the viewer's eyes. I don't know if there's a good or a bad thing that I'm teaching all how to do this because I see it a lot in music videos nowadays, especially in the Toronto area, but it is super useful. It does add a different stylistic element to your videos. So before we jump into it, please hit the like button. It would mean the world to me. Please hit the subscribe button. I'm trying to hit 200 by the end of the month and a thousand by the end of the year and you could be the deciding factor so give it a hint i'll give you two seconds all right let's jump right into it All right, so now that we're in Premiere, you'll notice that I have a basic music video cut already set up in my sequence. I'm just gonna play it through so you can see what it looks like, just some basic performances and one B-roll shot. So I think I'm gonna put it in between these two clips right here, just as it seems most fitting in between the one performance shot and the B-roll. So I'm gonna click my first bit of footage, copy it over to my main timeline, and then I'm gonna to wanna to hit Command J to bring up the speed properties and switch the time interpolation to frame blending from frame sampling and increase the speed to somewhere between 800% and 3200% depending on how quick you want the clip to be. Now that I have this sped up, I'm just gonna to wanna to nest the clip. And now you're gonna to wanna to go over to your toolbar and select the rate stretch tool. This is basically just gonna slow down and stretch out the clip. So you're gonna to wanna to stretch it out about double the length. You're gonna to have to play around with it just to see what looks best because this effect does depend on the clip you're using. And I'm gonna go back and grab my other piece of footage because I wanna do two clips back to back. I'm gonna paste it into my main timeline, pull up the speed options and do the exact same thing. Only this time I'm gonna use 800%. Make sure to set the time interpolation to frame blending. And now I'm going to nest this clip as well. And again, grab the rate stretch tool, stretch it out. I need it to be a little bit longer, so I'm gonna move it up, overlap the next clip, drop it back down. I'm just gonna render this out because this effect is RAM heavy. Now, if we play it back, you'll see that we do have the slow shutter effect. So this is about 75% of the effect already done. And now you're gonna wanna alt click and drag up each clip to duplicate the both of them. And then you're gonna go to your effects panel and search for directional blur. Drop that onto your first clip, go up to effects control. You're gonna wanna change the direction to 45 degrees and the blur length to 150. And then you're gonna wanna change the blend mode to screen just so it doesn't cover up the bottom clip completely. And now we're gonna do the exact same for the second clip, add the directional blur, direction 45 and blur length 150, blend mode to screen. And now you'll notice you have a 45 degree blur on most of the clip, which looks really cool. It just adds another layer to the effect. All right, so I'm pretty happy with that. The effect is 95% done. I'm just gonna add a final film burn just cause I think it looks good aesthetically. You don't have to do this, but I usually do it when I'm using this effect. So I'm going to go find my super eight millimeter film burn. I'm gonna hit my in and out so I know what is adding to the timeline. Throw over my first clip, switch the blending mode to screen, and now you'll see that looks pretty cool. And then I'm just gonna add it to the start of the second clip as well. I'm just gonna add a vertical flip to the film burn so it's not identical to the one right before it. And finally, let's just render that out and play it in full. And there you have it, that's how to step print. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, the slow shutter transition time lapse, AKA step printing, whatever the hell you wanna call it. It looks dope. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something. Just a quick PSA, please do not use this in every one of your videos. I see it being overused. So please, I'm begging you, <laughs> don't run off and add it to every video. However, it is great when used tastefully. And that concludes today's video. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, please hit the subscribe button. We're trying to hit 200 by the end of the month, 1,000 by the end of the year, and you can be the deciding factor. So please help out your boy. I'd really appreciate it so I can keep giving you guys whatever knowledge I have. And until next time, peace out.